I've seen Captain America Civil War three times now, and I could probably talk about this movie forever because I have so very many emotions about this movie. I really, really liked it. There were also some things I didn't like, but I, I loved it. Unlike Age of Ultron, where I saw it three times because I had the opportunity to see it three times, I like sought out seeing this movie again. But there'll be spoilers ahead, and in the interest of not having very much time and wanting to talk about the movie, let's just talk about the movie. In other words, I'm going to just talk into the void about this movie that I have just... Let's just get all these thoughts out, see how it goes. I was talking to my friends who have a variety of investments in this movie about how they felt about it, and it was like 50-50 between who liked it and who didn't. And what I got from the people who didn't like it was that there were parts that they really liked, but overall they felt, and I quote, meh about the movie. Or they're just, they thought there was too much talking, or... Yeah, that basically the complaint was too much talking. And I couldn't help but wonder, are these movies now just for the invested nerds who are super into them? Whether they're into comics or not? Everything that I and other people I know who are super invested in these movies really liked about the movies were the things that other people didn't like. For example, the talking. On Andre the Black Nerd's review, link below, uh, he talked about how people thought the movie was too slow in the beginning. But saying that it's just the invested nerds who like this movie isn't a fair analysis because on the Fan Bros podcast, which is primarily a comics podcast, Chico didn't like all the Vision and Wanda parts. He thought that was unnecessary. Meanwhile, on my corner of the internet, mainly on Tumblr and like fan fiction writers, it seems like what we are craving is a certain level of domesticity and familiarity between the characters. Before the second Avengers movie, there was so much fan fiction written about how all the Avengers end up at Stark Tower, how it becomes like Avengers Tower, and how they all start getting along and become friends and become a team that's more than just people who fight together, but a team who lives together and deals with everything together. That's the kind of story I was looking for in Age of Ultron. But it seemed like that movie just figured everybody would just assume that everyone was BFFs because they lived together and they fought together. But they didn't really show that to the audience, I don't think. Maybe that would have worked. But when all we see are Tony and Steve fighting and then bantering, and no scenes of them dealing with day-to-day -day stuff, it's hard to then believably build up the kind of tension between two people who have a strong day-to-day -day relationship where they're also superheroes, which from what I understand is a pretty stressful job. Introduction to the air conditioning, you're welcome. In Civil War, all of the talking and little bits in between the big physical fights was the delicious, delicious characterization I was looking for. I got what I wanted out of this movie. I got to see how lived in the Avengers mansion slash complex is. From Steve's office, which he has an office, to Wanda's room and how it's decorated, to Vision just kind of wandering through walls very comfortably and his very specific style that he has in his outfits. And him cooking, Wanda teasing him, and then saying she's going to go to the store as if this is a thing that she has done before many times. You see the routines in their every day by these little moments. And that I love that. I love that because it does feel like they do live together and they've been learning from each other and learning how to work with together. And they're just not automatically like banter buddies who punch people. Even Clint showing up and Wanda treating him like an old friend. For whatever reason, this worked for me in this movie, and it didn't work in the team parties together and fights together, therefore they're BFFs that happened in Age of Ultron. Maybe it was because everything else going on, including dialogue and body language, didn't seem to reinforce it in Age of Ultron, but that is something I will ponder at another time. Because when I was watching this movie, I felt much like I did when I watched Winter Soldier in like the first half of Iron Man 3, that this movie was lived in, that this is a real place where people have to go through all of this crazy stuff. I think that the most enjoyable movies are like that. The most enjoyable stories in any medium are like that. Another example of this is the discussion between Tony and Steve about Wanda and signing the Accords. What I saw in that scene were two people talking who have patterns of communication that are already established. When Steve finds out that Tony has Wanda under house arrest and didn't really tell anybody, his reaction is immediate and honest. He's reacting to conversations he's already had with Tony that were about different things, but along the same lines. They've had this conversation before, this argument before, whether it's Tony creating Ultron and Vision with Bruce and not telling anybody, or just in general where Tony makes decisions and thinks that everyone else will very quickly come along to the logic that he sees so clearly. I fully believe that this argument is an integral part of the relationship and it's becoming a full-blown, for real argument. They have a strong level of trust in each other despite a strained history together. And this story shows what happens when history puts pressure on that trust. Which leads me to Tony and what I said before, something that I think he has done very often in these movies, though I can't think of like concrete examples at the moment, of course. He assumes people will see his logic and go along with it. 
Because he sees all the variables and all the political moves, he was raised to. He did it pre the creation of Iron Man and he's doing it now. Because he's right, Wanda is not safe. She's not a citizen and she's considered highly dangerous. That's definitely not gonna end well. But Steve either doesn't believe him, which I doubt, or can't get past Tony just up and not saying anything to him about it, which is something that has ha clearly happened before. Probably multiple times. But again, Tony probably doesn't understand why Steve doesn't seem to understand how much danger everybody is in. Tony has seen what happens when power is bent and he tries to course correct every time. And to me, that's such a relatable thing. I have tried to do that and have course corrected so hard that I have paved the road to hell with good intentions. What I feel like what we have in this movie is not just two people fighting from two ideological viewpoints. It's more like family or friends arguing because they have such entrenched relationships that they don't realize that they haven't actually had a full conversation about what's going on. Especially when there's so much going on. Steve almost agrees to the Accords with the knowledge that they can be changed, that Tony can probably get them to change them, Natasha could probably get them to change them, so that there isn't that chance of abuse of power or directing the Avengers where they don't want to go, where they not directing them where they should go. Because those are very valid, like, scary concerns. And Tony, like I said before, of course corrects when he finds out about Zemo's plan and he immediately goes to help Steve no matter what the consequences are. Unfortunately, they're really terrible consequences, but he does exactly what he did in the first Iron Man movie, sees something's wrong and says, oh, I did this poorly, I need to fix it. Or the way Steve in the, se the first Avengers movie actually investigated when Tony told him, hey, S.H.I.E.L.D. and Fury aren't what you think they are. And it all boils down to the whole reason why they are fighting. And obviously it's because of everything. But the fact that they are also familiar with each other, that they all lean on each other. And as we can see in the opening fight, not just with quips, but with concern and advice, but quite a bit of emotional baggage, we can see, as Chris Evans said in an interview, this is a fight in a family. I didn't really think much of that comment other than like, oh, that's a good soundbite. Um, good for whoever came up with that. But it's true. That's, that's what it is. That's why it... They established the family and then had them tear each other apart, and that's why I was so invested in this movie. But maybe that's why people didn't like it, because they weren't really expecting that. Then and also, about Steve, real quick. Steve's emotions are very intense and very understated. And I think people have a hard time with that. They read it as boring when it's really him trying to hold everything together, read the situation, and react appropriately. Trying to keep everything buttoned up so that he can react the way he needs to. When you see him and Tony arguing about the Accords after having found Bucky, he is way less guarded, and so you can see the difference there. And then when Bucky asks him what's gonna happen to his friends after the big fight, he says, I don't know, but I will deal with it, whatever it is, breaks down emotionally momentarily, but as soon as he says, I'll deal with it, he buttons it all up again. Intense yet understated. I, that's the best words I can just think of to describe it right now, but I think that people don't like that or they don't pick up on it. I don't know. I think it's very relatable personally. But back to the point. I think the people that didn't like the talking weren't very invested in the Avengers as a family, as a like domestic group. They're seen as big brash characters so their fights should be big and easy to follow. They were promised an epic civil war based on ideologies but instead they got like shades of gray. The end fight is about miscommunication, manipulation, and grief. I don't think people were really expecting the level of grief that were, that's on display in this movie. It is about family, about Bucky and Steve having their lives intertwined and so horrifically mirrored. It's about Tony having to grow up with Captain America as seen through the eyes of his father and then having to deal with the real man who is not just Captain America but is also Steve Rogers. Of Wanda finding almost like paternal figures in Clint and Steve and following in their footsteps. Vision trying to figure out how to take care of these people he cares so deeply about and failing despite having such amazing power. Natasha trying to get them all to stop being so friggin' stupid and dumb and stupid. And Sam being there for Steve no matter what with devastating consequences. And then there's Rhodey who seems to be one of the few people who really gets where Tony is coming from and calls out Steve on the arrogance of our the best hands are our own. That's not a thing that's gonna last forever. So I can't say that maybe the, the reason that certain people didn't like this movie is because they're not invested fans of the movies or the comics because my mom loved this movie and she doesn't read the comics and she, 
I always have to kind of re-explain what's happened in the movies at this point because I've watched them so many times and she hasn't. The same with my dad, who loved this movie too. Um, uh, another friend of mine who also really liked the movie and isn't into the comics. And then, um, like I said before, there are people who are super into the comics who are like, did we really need all this? Did we really need all that? And then friends who were really into the movies who loved this movie. And I feel like those of us who wanted that sort of like domestic family, but with like superpowers, horrible consequences for actions that are real, what I kind of been getting in my fan fiction and hoping to see on screen, honestly, like we got that. Maybe not 100%, but for the most part, we got that. Especially because we all desperately wanted to know what was going to happen to Bucky to the Winter Soldier. This movie managed to show me without hashing out every single detail how he regained his memory and then like lived and figured out how to live. Maybe not what the next step was, but how to maintain. The whole fight between him and Steve at the beginning, I mean, it's not even between them, but just with them, against them, against the, the soldiers that are there. It's everything of who Bucky once was and who he is now. Trying to keep everything level and secure, fighting so well with Steve, but at the same time throwing him off. Trying to keep everything hidden because he's even more displaced than Steve is, but not letting anything get in the way of getting what he wants. And all of that is why I enjoyed this movie so much. This movie gave me that family without being too flashy about it, honestly. Wanda follows in the footsteps of Clint and Steve, but maybe if Tony had explained to her what he was thinking, not to say that she would have agreed with him because there's so much going on with that, but she might have seen why he did what he did. Instead of just ambushing her with it, which is a thing that I have always feel doesn't end well when you ambush people with information at the last minute about something. It just never ends well. And let's be real, they're both right and they're both wrong because Steve doesn't agree with the Accords. But how terrifying would it be to live in a world where just the superheroes could come at any time and do whatever they wanted and they don't have anybody to answer to? We know that they're good people, but like the people who live in that earth don't necessarily know that because all they see is just buildings coming down all the time and like things coming from the sky. <laughs> that would be really scary. I would be very scared. I, I don't really think the Accords is the answer, but refusing to budge isn't necessarily the answer either. And there's so many complicated reasons why Steve doesn't, you know, has to just say no and fight, full on fight about it. And I keep thinking, you know, this is a situation of who watches the Watchmen, Watchmen comic, but also like who is watching the people who are watching the Watchmen because there's at that just every level there needs to be accountability and how do you even reinforce that? And if we've learned anything from anything is that power is going to be abused just like time is going to pass. And this is exactly why I can't talk about this movie because I will not stop. I just keep talking. I have so many thoughts about this movie. And to say no, did you know there's already fan art about Bucky and getting the plums and how plums apparently help with memory, maybe? So hopefully all of that conveys why I love this movie and why I think that for some people this movie didn't have the impact that they were looking for. And just, you know, to add two more things, because again, cannot stop talking about this movie or thinking about it. Two things that absolutely sucker punched me in, like, the emotions was Tony and Pepper not being together. Let me just say... I understand why. I understand, you know, he has to be vulnerable, blah, 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 blah. But they are my OTP, my one true pair in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Like, I don't... I will read almost any ship in fan fiction. Definition of ship, for those who don't know, it is short for relationship. It's when you want two people, sometimes more, to be in a relationship together in a story that you like. Moving on, uh, they, they are my favorite. I love them so much and I was so sad to find out that they're not together. They better be together in one of the next movies because they belong together. I don't care that they're not together in comics because that would, I don't, I mean, maybe they are. I don't know what's going on in the comics currently with those two, but no, I do know they're not together in the comics right now and that is fine. I don't care. In the movies, they should be together. I'm not happy that they're not it makes me so sad. <laughs> it makes me so sad. I want them to be together. The other moment of like sucker punch emotions was Steve breaking down when Bucky asks him what's gonna happen to your friends. I just, oh, I didn't even realize I saw the third time that he was crying during that part. I'm so sad. 
that poor Steve, he has so many emotions just like in, just in there that like, I don't, he, maybe he listens to punk music to kind of help even it out. I don't know. Nitpicks was like the airport, which is all fun and games, but I just, there's something about it that didn't feel real, which is a really stupid complaint, I think, when everything else felt really close and real, and the fight was really good, and you were able to follow everything that happened, and I love the way that everybody worked together in different ways, that was great, but there was just something that just felt kind of off, and I don't know if just because there was like huge landscape, kind of blank canvas in the background. And I have my problems at the end, not necessarily like the story of how it ended, but just the way it was depicted, with, you know, spoilers, like Steve just sort of leaning into the light. I don't know. That felt weird. I probably, either something more ambiguous or like Natasha doing that. That would have been kind of cool. I, I personally think if it had been like something a little bit different. It just felt really like cartoony. I, it just was strange. I would have liked something a little bit different. Also, you know, why did Hydra have a tape of that? That didn't really make sense, but I'm, I'm sure we could come up with a reasonable solution and that will probably be in fan fiction in the future. I love this movie. It gave me so much of what I wanted from these movies and I'm just like really really happy that it was successful. Somehow I this is the end of the video. Managed to say everything I wanted to say. I have no idea how long this is going to be. Um, I'm trying to make this at the last minute. I wrote a script. It counts. It counts as my New Year's resolution. Um, I hope you liked it and thank you for listening. Um, I will talk to you later.